looking up here just a second. I think, yep, looks like we're connected here. Boom. Okay, we are connected, but I don't, I don't see you on here. Oh, yeah. Now I see you. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So now it's switching back and forth. Cool. I'm going to uh, pull it up on my phone. I guess that whatever change we made, it's going to, it's going back and forth between you and I instead of uh, both of us on there. This is so because we're, huh? Ah, bummer. I'll get the then. Yeah, bump that. Is it because it's pinned. Let me see what happens if I undo it. Yeah, it is alternating. Huh. Okay. All good. Yeah, I'm gonna mute that so that way, that way I get uh, thrown off. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can fix this. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know. All good. All good. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. All right, man. Here we go. I may have fixed it. Here we go. Now we're set. All right. All right. So welcome. Sorry about that, guys. We had some technical difficulties there, right? Uh, so welcome, guys. Welcome to Mobile Home Investing Full Time. So we're back on live again today, guys. We've got a special guest joining us. I'm excited uh, to have him on. Uh, but before we get started, guys, just a quick intro. Uh, thanks for everybody for, uh, for tuning in. Uh, I want to welcome all the new members and obviously say hello to all the our old school members. But uh, if you're brand new to the group, guys, welcome. I want to make sure that you guys uh, know the resources that are available to you here in the group. Right. So first thing is make sure you use the well, first thing, make sure you introduce yourself. Right. Say hi. Let people know where you're from. Right. And introduce yourself. And then I want you to check out the search bar. If you have any questions or any topics uh, regarding mobile home investing, uh, check that out. Chances are whatever questions uh, you have, they've probably been asked before. Right. So one of the best things about this group is it's very beginner friendly. We've got tons of experienced mobile home investors that do a lot of different things, over 12,000 members nationwide, uh, and they're gracious enough to share their journeys and come on here and join me, just like our, our friend here, Jeremy, that's gonna tell us a little bit about the, the, the tiny home niche. So I'm excited to have him. Uh, and guys, look, if you have any questions along the way, make sure that you, you know, first of all, say hi in the comments, let us know where you're tuning in from, but also if you have any questions along the way for, for Jeremy or I, make sure you drop them in there, right? And we'll, we'll do our best to, to keep up with it. Um, outside of that, man, I, we're just going to go ahead and jump into it, right? So, Jeremy, if you want to uh, welcome, first of all, and thank you for joining us. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Jeremy and I actually connected on Clubhouse, right? Uh, we're on there and we, we, we've uh, uh, shared a couple of stages together to, you know, talk to people about the affordable housing industry. He brought up a ton of value and we're actually looking at doing some things together. So, um, I'm just going to turn it over to you, man. If you want to tell everybody a little bit about yourself and where you're from and how you got started. Yeah, dude, it's, it was awesome to meet you too. I remember like when we came, like, we were on clubhouse, we were just shooting the breeze and just brainstorming. But um, for everyone who's watching, I appreciate y'all carving out time tonight, man. Uh, my name is Jeremy Winger. I'm actually from Huntsville, Alabama. I am uh, known as the tiny home plug and I uh, work with Galvin Allen Homes out of San Antonio, Texas, actually. And we are working on the, we're on the mission to help solve affordable housing and attainable living and to be able to use container homes and tiny homes on wheels to be able to accomplish that mission and teaming up with everyone under the sun, no matter where you're at in real estate, if you're just starting all the way up to being, if you have an opportunity zone fund, it does not matter. And so we're working with everyone to help do creative deals and have a great time. And I've been, it's funny because I've been in real estate for the past 10 years, but on the other side of the coin, productizing the company is to help them actually make money on, when it comes down to systems and branding and marketing. And I've worked with everyone under the sun when it comes to brokers and agents and 
uh, being able to really help investors, tax lien guys, opportunity zone guys, and really put all that together. And it's interesting because two years ago, back right when uh, 2020 hit, man, there was, I, I just got sick of everyone complaining about the nonstop, um, nonstop problems and never fixing it really, truly. And, and so that's where uh, container homes came into play because there's a huge, huge advantage when it comes to homestead properties, uh, like a four bedroom, three bath, or even two to be able to do with uh, mobile home parks as well, campgrounds and RV parks to go, you know, acquire them uh, when it comes to even integrating seller financing, right? And to be able to, to pull pull in, you know, short term rental model into existing, you know, existing properties and existing business models that may just be dead or stagnant for whatever reason, you know. And how can we help churches, you know, fund like self fund independent living facilities and do different things? And it's just so much, so much, man, so much. And what's up, Samira and Justin? <laughs> so you guys, you guys manufacture the, the homes in Alabama. No, no. So I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. I live here. I'm born and raised. I'm a native. But the team is out of San Antonio. So we manufacture, we'll design them. We do all the renderings in-house and deliver from San Antonio to anywhere in the nation, nationwide. And so it doesn't matter. Well, we make sure that we've got, you know, as far as whatever project people are doing, if it's a mini motel um, to, yeah, to mobile home trailer park, to be able to have, you know, whatever they need um, and be able to have it to where it's like, as far as, you know, de delivering their on, on, on site, but also we have a traveling welding team too. So we'll do all of that in house and also our units start at like 50 grand, you know, and they'll, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty bonkers, man. It's fun. <laughs> so look, is it, is it similar like with mobile homes, right? A lot of people live in, in mobile home communities where they're renting the pad and, you know, and that, and so they don't own the land. And then there's, you know, some people will, will buy a piece of land and attach it to it. Is it basically the same thing? Yeah, pretty much. And it's just all about zoning. And it's interesting because, I mean, there are so many, and I'm kind of like, I'm winded because today's been so busy. And, oh, the kind of conversations that have happened, man. I mean, from, you know, gosh, I mean, they're 320 square feet, eight and a half uh, foot wide, nine and a half foot tall. And, you know, we can cut them up and do double wide, right? You know, <laughs> and we get all double wide, bro. And that way I set them on, I set them on cinder blocks as well. And it's interesting because we can get them done in three weeks, you know, four weeks, you know, completely bare knuckled from being bare knuckled to complete and be able to, to deliver them wherever we need to. And it's interesting because we'll have it all comes with its own bedroom, Murphy bed, uh, full bathroom, the shower, and full like, toilet sink, et cetera, um, full on kitchen, chef's kitchen, recessed lighting, backsplash, um, TV outlets, uh, full on living space. And I mean, we'll do French doors, sliding doors. Um, standard doors, you know, you name it. And so we've got a ton of ability to be able to really integrate and be very creative with it. And to even too, to have like a short-term rental side of it too, to help with being able to bring in, you know, that existing business model. So it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun, man. <laughs> it's pretty fun. So look, I mean, well, with, with mobile homes, you know, a lot of the, the popular homes are the three bedroom, two baths, right? Because most families are, are going to need that third bedroom and it's, it's pretty common. Those are the most popular. You can, you can sell those all day long. Mm -hmm. Who who's your who's your your ideal customer for for a tiny home? I goodness man, I mean anybody and everyone. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna afford it, but I mean it's a blanket statement. But um, uh, homeowners, you know, even developers who want to level up. I mean, those who uh, purchase mobile homes, those who develop mobile home parks, those who develop campgrounds, RV parks. Um, you know, those who are buying raw land and developing it. Those who are, have commercial land in the portfolio. Um, investors, you know, who have uh, properties that they want to repurpose and try to find, you know, give it another shot to the different types of development. It's, it's pretty wild. It really is. I mean, everyone, um, homeowners and investors, you know, and that kind of breaks down into a bunch of different categories too, because uh, not every homeowner and investor are made the same, right? And, and so that's where, you know, I mean, even too, uh, you know, I love, you know, finding RV park owners, you know, to be able to you know, be able to repurpose that and add uh, tiny homes on wheels, which is our V8 classification asset. And then even to be able to, uh, for those who have, uh, you know, like I said, raw land, if they want to develop it, get it reappraised, you know, use that for this collateral, which is fantastic. Um, you know, homeowners who have a big old backyard that want to add them in their backyard, um, you know, fun stuff, man. I mean, there's just, there's so many ways to make it work. Even to like with commercial land, we're doing mini motels, you know, like a motel six made from containers. <laughs> and so, you know, almost, and, and so mobile home parks too, man, like, um, a lot of times mobile home park owners, what will happen is that they have they, they have empty pads or they're just not making enough. And so they want to find a way to repurpose like half of the acreage or like say they got an acre or whatever 
Uh, we could fit 10 units on an acre and, and pull out 30,000 a month on a bad month. $200 a month or $200 a night. Um, Cause you think about it, if like you're renting out the pad for 750 a month, right? And you do $200 a night. I mean, it adds up really quick. And, and that's, what's crazy. You know, one unit can pull out three to 6,000 a month, you know, and I'm doing it 200 bucks, even two, you know, I mean, tw like 2,200, $2,000 at 150 bucks a month. Oh, um, they said turn up the volume. Hang on one second. Oh, your volume. No, I was up at hundred percent. I may need to talk a little louder. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, no. I, this is what I'm curious about. I guess with the size of them, what's it, like just your standard size? How many square feet did you say? 320 square feet. Are there any issues like with with like like the city or the county as far as like regulations of the size of the homes? Do they have to be a certain? Do you it really boils down. Problems? Yeah, I mean, every, every uh, yes. Short answer, yes, but um, all with everywhere. But um, there's no problems, really. It's just a matter of seeing what are the building allowances and um, what, like, within the city, there's sometimes there's an issue with optics. And so, and that's where it gets really interesting with transitional living, because uh, we look at, you know, I mean, I, you know, I spoke to the housing authority and the senior planner here at Huntsville. I mean, we took off all the boxes being hurricane proof, um, you know, with the funding. I mean, if we do like a, if we have a double wide, that's going to be probably around 120,000 or so with amenities and welding and clips and stuff. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's just really looking at concrete pad or beams, uh, or if it can be laid on set, put on center blocks. You know, a lot of folks are putting them on center blocks, just like mobile homes are. Um, and so it's just really about just what is that zone for? And if the city doesn't have any issues with it, I mean, honestly, it's free game, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. I was just curious about that. Mm -hmm. We talked about this before, right? It's similar to mobile homes. They provide a lot of solutions for a lot of different reasons, you know, people. Um, so we talked about this, right? And I mentioned this the other night. So we're working on a project in Biloxi, right. uh, getting ready to, you know, see what we can do for them. We've got a, a mobile home park in Biloxi, Mississippi that, that purchased, first of all, it's a church that created a nonprofit organization and, and they purchased a mobile home park through the organization. And it's a hundred space park. It's got 50 vacant pads. And um, what they're looking to do with it is, their mission to, it's their mission to house homeless veterans, battered women, right? And um, we're having trouble finding homes for them in Biloxi, right? So I'm, I'm out there hustling, trying to find them some deals and it's, it's, it's been pretty tough, kind of dry out there. Um, so we're considering the, the tiny home aspect. So we're gonna connect the, the we're gonna connect those guys out there in Biloxi with, with, uh, with Jeremy here. We're gonna see if we can, you know, maybe offer them some options. So, but Jeremy, you're working on a few projects too as well, right? Similar, right? A little bit. <laughs> yeah, a couple of projects. Can you talk to us about that? Some of the things you guys are using uh, uh, homes for, you got a, what, in Texas, California? Yeah, I mean, gosh, so, good Lord. So one, we're doing a uh, transitional living apartment complex um, in San Diego in an opportunity zone with an opportunity zone fund. Um, those guys are a whole other animal, man, oh, man, oh, man. And uh, uh, we're actually building out a homestead right now. We're uh, yeah, finalizing the numbers on it. Um, but one, like building a homestead, four bedroom, two bath, and that's going to be a two story. So that's going to be a legitimate homestead. So they're going to have a bit number to carry through the normal deed process. Uh, but then we've got one that's a homeowner in California, um, nine, nine, two, zero, one, one, oh, area, area code. I can't remember what city that's in. Um, it's not 90210, but, um, <laughs> but he's adding three, uh, 20 foot containers in his backyard and he's going to have them just as a bedroom, a bathroom and a walk-in area, super easy cut crash pad. People can come in and out go as the police, so on and so forth. Uh, definitely a short-term rental. We've got a homeowner who's put one out of their backyard and that's actually a, um, as a, that is actually a, a rental property that they're renting out the home. They just want to amplify and add more doors to it or more rooms to it. Um, property equity is going to increase, you know, I mean, no telling how much. And that area um, right now, I've got one uh, for a campground um, that, that we're going to be building out 20 double stacks and um, actually a trucker stake too. We're doing a double stack and a triple stack. We're building out cabanas, uh, garden shack, uh, bathhouses, and uh, driving ranges. Imagine Top Golf made from containers. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess you kind of, you may have just kind of answered my quote, my own question. That I had, you know, like, why would a park owner, why, why, why would they, why would they, uh, 
choose to go with the tiny homes. But just thinking about what you just said, I guess I guess one thing is you can fit more tiny homes on 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 a parcel of land, whatever whatever you're working with, right? You can fit more units. And yeah. then the other thing, which you just said, like right behind you, you can stack them. Yep. <laughs> So you can go up and you can put more per square footage or whatever on a piece of land. So what well, are we here. looking at here? Let me know if you can hear me. Uh, everyone comment below and let me know if I'm uh, if I'm uh, too quiet. <laughs> and so, yeah, and I have it just so you all know, I speak fast, but sometimes I get lazy when I talk and it's the country in me. Um, so they kind of mumble together. And my wife, my wife is Kenny and so she, she nails me on it every time. Um, this is <laughs> this is a double stack container, and this is more of a side view for it. You can see we have a picnic area right here. Um, there's going to be a there should be a door right here. I should update the rendering. Um, but you have stairs right here, and also this is a full on living area upstairs, one bedroom. Uh, but it comes with a queen murphy bed, fold down, so they can actually double as an office. Um, so that's what's really cool about that. And uh, we stack them on top of each other, and you uh, just double the footprint, uh, double the amount of the excuse me, walk. that's a bank drink coming back up, bro. Um, but, uh, but that's where you can double the amount of doors and square footprint and be able to have it to where you have a full-on living area up here. Both of them have their own kitchen. Both of them have their own uh, their own shower. Uh, both of them have their own full bathroom, uh, full on living area, TV area, uh, the lounge area, walkout balcony. And I mean, that's what's so cool about it. I wonder if, uh, yes, yeah, terrible photo. Um, but yeah, man, it's pretty wild. So that's where that the walkout balcony is pretty room. I mean, that's really cool, man. And, and that's something that um, allows people the ability to just go out and relax. And, and that's what's, it's just so wild, man. And that's, you know, these are the tiny homes on wheels, you know? And so we'll circle back around to that. <laughs> but, uh, but we can stack them and do a triple stack as well and be able to even to do homesteads like this right here. And the same way we can stack them, we can also make full blown homesteads you know, and that way, uh, be able to have them where we can even do pulls. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, and so that's where it really doubles and uh, really elevates the ability to create community. And because we can create a ton of different things as far as being able to uh, being able to really uh, be creative and to be able to create that community, create that feel, um, have lower overhead and faster turnaround time than compared to stick builds and uh, a bunch of other um, a bunch of other uh, a bunch of other builds. Um, but what's unique is that with um, actually, see, I wonder if that's planned. Yes, it is. So, um, so I'm gonna leave that plan. Forgive you. Forgive me if y'all I uh, get seasick on that. Oh, well, it's pretty cool. Yeah, is this is inside of a beach container. Forgive some of it being cut off. I actually, need to edit the video so that way it's kind of landscape style. But um, you'll see the full kitchen in here, uh, bathroom actually right here behind me, um, shower right there. And uh, yeah, and the pocket doors right there, full on bedroom, bam, right there. The fans up here, you can't see, it's cut off. But uh, but yeah, that's a pool over there too. <laughs> that's another one. But um, but yeah, dude, it's, it's a lot of cool stuff. I've right? seen that. I've seen someone, if a po ad popped up. You know how yeah. like on Facebook, like you start talking about something and then it, they start popping up in your feed. But I saw an ad, a, a sponsored ad for some uh, container pools. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing, too, is that I need to, um, I actually need to connect with the pool companies uh, here in town because that would be a perfect fit when they're installing a pool. Same footprint as a pool, literally. Like one of the containers, you know, of course, you know, pools are rounded at the bottom. But same, you know, same footprint, you know, same. That's where like the equity increase on in the property of a homestead can boost up uh, dramatically. Uh, depending on the city and the state of where it's at. Um, kind of fading in and out. Thank you. Okay. That uh, was Marie over there. Um, but that's where, that's where when it comes down to, uh, you know, the just differences. I mean, we're making bars right now, you know, like, like mobile eateries, you know, offices. It's, it's insane. There it really is. It's crazy. Awesome. What we can do with them. And that's what opens it up so much for the mobile home parks, you know, being able to have these and be like the internet cafe, um, you know, do some other cool stuff. And that kind of goes back to independent living too, man. You know, like being able to create a, um, um, here, let me turn this off just to get me a little Yeah, now I'm getting dizzy. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm like, no. <laughs> so, I almost don't want to look at myself. When I'm <laughs> well, I think I mentioned this to you the other day, right? So I've got a, a buddy of mine who, uh, Mark Anthony, who uh, very yeah. well known in this group, uh, a big contributor to this community. Wait, the singer? 
No, 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 no. <laughs> no. J Lo's husband. Uh, <laughs> he, he, joined, he was actually on last night. We do like a live once a month and everything. But they're actually, I think I told you about that. They're working on a on a container uh city, container home city in Arizona. Yeah. Where it's it's stacked. And the idea is the bottom half is designed to be like a business, yep. and the top is like where you know where, where they would live. Yep. And it's it's about just you know not having to commute back and forth to work and changing you know just 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 a different you know different world well that's the um, same for doing san diego it's like uh, 16 residential units and uh, two offices and two to go kitchens kitchens are downstairs offices are upstairs same on same little thing to where it's like you know being able to really have it available for them that's awesome yeah i remember you telling me about that too so i guess from from a trans transportation standpoint are these easier and cheaper to move as well is that a factor or not not really I mean, I, really, I don't think it's really that much of a factor, honestly. I mean, uh, mobile homes are uh, probably, what, I think, what, 10, 12 foot wide, roughly, or uh, 16, 16. 16. So these are easier to transport because they're eight and a half foot wide. Um, so we'll, what we'll do is even if we're making homesteads, we'll transport the individual units and then have the clips there and we'll them on site, you know? And so that's where with the homesteads, I mean, I, I guess on that factor, as far as it being skinnier, sure. But um, you know they're not as like, it's not as like top heavy. Um, but other than that, I mean, I guess that does factor into the weight and wobbly feature. You know, as far as the driver. Um, what is the name of the community in San Diego? I cannot tell you that yet, Marie, because it's not being done yet. It will uh, once it does. I'll, it'll debut, and then I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, let's see, Maria. I think she is, Maria. Are you the one with the park in uh, in Mississippi somewhere? Oh, cool. I think she was looking for. Uh, Maybe looking looking for uh, some container homes or considering it some tiny homes. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's one of the biggest things. Like once it's uh, once it starts development, oh man, I'm gonna blast the living crap out of it on the tiny home plug website. All the de different developments, like the Trucker State, once that starts development too, man, because I already got back the IDEC video as far as like all with all the renderings and everything in it, and he's raising all the funds and a bunch of other stuff too. Um, let's see, but yeah. So look, this is one thing that comes up when, when we're talking about tiny homes. Talk to me about the cost. Yeah, I mean, they start in comparison to, I mean, like a, a two bedroom, three bedroom mobile home. Why would some, you know, as far as cost, like how does it compare? Oh, sorry. So uh, I was looking at Marie, uh, Maria's question over there too, as far as ADA regulations. But um, but one of the, as far as the cost comparison, they come as like a, as a one bedroom. Um, and so that's where with the living space and the amount of square footage on it, um, they'll start at 50,000, but with the amenities, what happens is when it comes down to, uh, really what, um, really when it comes down to, uh, the square footage and what they want to use it for, and just, if they do a double wide, they'll start at 50,000, kind of hover around 73,000 or so. It just depends on like the, uh, like the upgrades and stuff as far as like towel bathroom, um, so on and so forth. So usually a double wide would be around like 1, 140, 150-ish or so max uh, with the amenities. And so that's where it gets pretty interesting. Um, so it just really it kind of fluctuates, but they'll start at 50,000 um, base bare model, uh, bare model um, and making sure that, um, but yeah, sorry, it was, it was, but um, I mean, I have ADHD, if you haven't been able to tell. But uh, yeah, let's we'll start at 50 grand. I have around 73,000 or so, but we can put two bedrooms in one, but it was just kind of sacrifice the living space area. So right around two bedroom, uh, that's two bedroom, two bath, you know? And so it's like, um, with even two, we can customize it to where we have, um, we can cut out some of the stuff, you know, have it to where we have a kitchen in some area and we get very creative, have them side by side, right? And so that way it kind of hits that 17 foot wide, you know, that, that this, that, that, um, yeah, and so the 17 foot wide as far as uh, as far as the full on footprint of it. But other than that, I mean, we can we can repurpose one of the containers to do uh, two bedrooms, have one bedroom in the other one, and then that way have it to where I mean they can be stacked on top of each other, stairs outside or right like side by side with each other. I mean, it's it's kind of an open floor plan, um, so that can kind of bump it down. If we don't do a, like two kitchens and two bathrooms in it, uh, as far as like a standard model, probably bring it down to 120 ish. Or so roughly with like you know we'll both come with a mini split HVAC, um, you know all the electrical, all the insulation, everything, you know flooring, a whole nine yards. So, mm -hmm. oh hold on, you're on mute, brother. No, oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> uh, my dogs were barking earlier. So, uh, Samara says a tiny home on wheels. Are the wheels considered an upgrade? No, no, that's a uh, so tiny homes on wheels. Container homes are not on uh, on wheels. 
tiny homes on wheels that are stick built on a trailer. And so those are smaller footprint than 250 square feet, but they come with, uh, you see these two windows right here? Those are the bedrooms. So these are 13 foot tall right here. These are 13 foot tall. And if I remember correctly, uh, what was it about? No, they're not 20 foot. They're, yeah, about 25 foot. Uh, I need to double check on the length of it, but um, but yeah, these will start at around 85,000 or so because they are a stick build, but they do come with two bedrooms, full bath, kitchen. Um, and so that's where, uh, that's where you get really creative with it too. And oh, hang on. I did not mean to hit blur my background. My bad. There we go. But uh, I'm going to actually add in some photos here so that way you can kind of see the inside of it too. Uh, Cause they'll come, they're really high ceilings. It's, it's wild, man. I, you know, when you, when you walk inside of one, oh, like it feels massive. <laughs> Like, it's crazy, dude. Oh man, but uh, but yeah, they don't. The, the wheels are definitely not great. They come with it for sure. But the containers, though, those are the ones that uh, those are the ones that start at fifty thousand, and they can usually land between seventy to seventy five thousand or so on an average basis. You know, like chef's kitchen, tile bathroom. Um, you know, some folks like bigger windows, so they'll usually add like a four by four window or like a six by six window, like really nice, like big open sliding windows add sliding doors to it too. So that way it has like a nice, really open, um, nice open like natural lighting. Um, and then really make it look, uh, feel luxurious and that. And that's where it gets really cool because people are doing short term rental. That's where it looks really clean, sitting on the cinder blocks. <laughs> so, uh, but that's where it gets really cool because um, yeah, you can, the more, uh, more elegant it looks, the more that you can charge for it. Uh, just the truth. And uh, the better, the better the feel is, the more that you can do as far as, uh, you know, working your way up to, you know, 150, 200 bucks a night. I uh, look like I'm spacing off because I'm trying to find those photos. Uh, hey, they're buried down here. All right. But, I imagine uh, you guys have finance options. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We have a five, 10, 15 and 30 year options available for folks and the uh, rates will start at 6.99%. And so they'll do it. We'll do a construction or conventional loan. Nice. Yeah. And what, what we do as far as our drawdown schedule um, is 50% down as far as the entire build process, despite however many units it is, because that's when we order the materials. And then we'll do the framing and the, uh, the, the installation electrical, or sorry, we'll do all the framing first, make sure we do all the cutouts, get everything all the, everything prepped and ready to go. Then we do a 25% halfway as far as electrical insulation and all of the cosmetics and make sure everything's up to snuff. 25% before delivery, so that way we get all the, the, all the backsplash and everything ready to rock and roll. So. Super straightforward and easy. So where's where's the hot market for tiny homes? United States. Anywhere? <laughs> really? <laughs> well, it just really depends on the investor, honestly. And it depends on that person. It really, truly does. Because at the end of the day, it's about what that person is best set up for. You know, and, and when it comes down to land that's in the middle of the sticks, that's kind of my favorite because I love marketing and positioning getaways that are close by wedding venues. Big time, big time. Wedding venues is a big one too, man. You know, wedding venues need bridal stays. So if y'all know wedding venue owners, pff, oh my goodness gracious. Like they, like when it comes down to creating something that is nice and clean and elegant, uh, that really has that, this that pff, breath of a feel. I mean, imagine they come in to, you know, come into, you know, the, I'm going to play the video again for those who are just tuning in. But um, like this right here is what one of the units can look like, you know, just walking in on the inside and looking clean. But um, I'm dying it. I wasn't able to find the other inside of the tiny homes on wheels. I'm gonna find them again because I need to upload all of this into everything. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean that's where it gets really creative because bridal stays, a bunch of different ways to be able to find raw land. Um, I like the micro markets the most because everyone's focused on the on, on the most of the, on the on the macro markets, the bigger markets. Um, I just yeah, and for me, I just I love to be able to look at how can I create leverage when no one's looking. Yeah. You know? Like when everyone's looking at luxury, I look at land. <laughs> so, I never go where the crowd is going. Um, but when it comes down to, um, you know, when it comes down to really, I mean, yeah, looking at way, where people are set up at, you know, some folks may learn breaking into it. Some of them have, some folks have a massive amount of like portfolio, you know, uh, mobile home parks that they may have acreage that's attached to it. They just, it's just sitting there. It could be a parking or junk, uh, like a junkyard, like mini junkyard, but they can repurpose, you know, it could be a quarter acre. Who cares? Put four doors on it. You know, stack them up two by side. I've been noticing some parks in my area that you know I've done business in for years that are that are starting to bring in some some units, some small, you know, some tiny homes and yeah. fill some vacancies. 
Well, that's where it kind of, that's where it gets really interesting, you know, and because a lot of, um, you know, why, why make that in a month when you can make it in a week? Or say that, say that again. I said, why make that in a month? Like it's just, people are charging on the path for like 750 bucks a month, right? Uh, like why make that in a month when you can make it in three days? You know, or even a week. Yeah. You know, and that's the, and that's the real cold, hard truth to it. You know, kind of pony up to it. Because right now, I mean, if people aren't pivoting and adjusting, it's going to be a rude awakening in the next 18 months. Yeah. Well, yeah. we had that conversation, you and I, we talked a little bit about the short-term rental industry yeah. and, and uh, all the different opportunities there. So I mentioned to you, my wife and I are getting ready to, to jump into that space too. Thanks to one of my students, Woo-hoo. Martina Marie. I don't know if she's watching, but she <laughs> turned me on to that, that short-term rental business and uh, we're all in now. Well, you know what? That's the craziest thing. Like the same infrastructure that can be used for long-term stay is used for short-term rental. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, there's no magic to it. There's no like, still your butt. <laughs> there's none of that. Like it's like, it really, truly, um, you know, like it, when it comes down to like structuring it, marketing it, right. It all boils down to marketing. Yeah. It all boils down to systems, you know, making sure that you have the, like what you're, what you're marketing is actually what you're selling. <laughs> Go figure, yeah. you know, and a lot of folks are like, ain't that the same thing? No, bro. Uh, and so when it comes to the right systems or direct booking site, right? Yeah, most mobile home parks, I mean, probably uh, functioning off of spreadsheet, Google Drive, and, you know, you know, probably, you know, st- Stripe or something else, you know, something more rudimentary, checks, you know? And that's where it gets down to, um, when it comes down to repositioning it, I mean, for goodness sake, you know, I mean, people could easily end a contract or a lease in somewhere else, et cetera. And, you know, like if you buy a land, like a lot next to it, like a neighboring or adjoining lot that's right next to where you're at currently, Buy that out. Yeah, even if it's an acre. Oh my goodness. Like, Lord, Lord. If it's commercial, motel, done. Do this. Like, double, double them up, like, around the back, on top of each other, but do one. Like, right now here in Huntsville, there's zoning that's, uh, that will allow you to do a single family home build and mini motel layout. Same plot. Mm. Gold, gold. Oh my God. And the kicker is, like, what is that one path that's like all the way through? You know, like in that laser field, you know, in like the Mission Impossible movies where they have to go like all the way through everything, you yeah. know, that's kind of where everyone's at in real estate. Like, what do we do? You know, and like, what do we, what do we actually, what do we really need to do? And I, I just saw myself over there kind of like goofy. <laughs> Hello. Anyways, if you don't laugh, then I'm the only one laughing. It's okay. It's y'all in this now. But, um, but like, what is that one path all the way through? And like, that's going to avoid the, like within Georgia, right? With the whole entire short term rental laws that went into place. You can only own one plot and then have the adjoining plot as your short-term rental nothing else anymore that's a new law that went well, in what's going on in georgia i don't uh regarding short term yeah so like two weeks ago they instituted a new law to where you can only own, own one plot of land and the adjoining plot of land to do short-term rentals and you're limited to two plots and that's it now they didn't say how big they had to be yeah now what's interesting is that the loophole around that what was the loophole, loophole I wouldn't say loophole. I'd just say the green pasture path through all the way down. Motel. Short-term rental anyways. But yeah. the key is the hotel industry is lobbying against short-term rental like they did, the taxi industry did with Uber. Yeah, they're taking a hit, I guess. Ooh. Let's just say the hotel occupancy went down almost 50 to 75% there in the pandemic and they're struggling. And they, that's where they diverted their resources. But the ironic part is the Marriott brand also buys properties. Just yeah. like Zillow. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what we find ourselves doing at more, staying in, uh, you know, Airbnbs versus hotels now. Well, of course, it's yeah. easy. Um, so, yes, uh, Maria, I am saying short term motel. But I mean, technically, when you call like when you call Latino chips in Mexico, there's still it's called chips. Uh, I live in Colombia, like I lived in South America for a year. And, um, and it's funny, man. It's actually, I, I learned my Spanish in Colombia when I was in Barranquilla for six months. And, you know, when it comes to mo- like short term motels, motels are short term. Yeah, they are. They, they don't teach, teach me Spanish. Most people think I'm Hispanic anyway. So, <laughs> what? I said, maybe you can teach me some Spanish. Most people think I'm Hispanic anyway. <laughs> I heard that. Well, and that's where it's interesting, man. Is that where, um, like, it's like, it's like, you know, any kind of like, any kind of 
in another country, it doesn't matter where it's at, you know, it could be China chips or whatever. In China, they call them chips, you know, it doesn't matter. Like it's regardless. Like, and that's the thing here, like folks are like, it's Alabama sauce. No, it's just sauce, bro. It's just sauce. It's just sauce. And so, but like that's where motels are always short term, no matter what. Hotels, same thing. You know, and that's why motels like like uh what was it, Love's uh gas station partnered up, I think it was with Motel 8 to build out a corporate living stay flat out all the way. And um, you know, and fries and chips are UK. Yes, I know. And so yeah, French fries were not made by were not French. <laughs> so neither was French toast. But um, but like that's what's so interesting is that with motels and doing anything as far as commercial zone lots all day. And there's a lot less, um, well, besides, you know, like uh, setbacks and easements and parking minimums and fire code stuff, like fire suppression, that's the only additional thing, like really, truly. And that's what's so interesting. You know, when it comes down to even this build right here, this is going in a trucker stay and it goes in, it goes back to those cabanas and a bunch of other stuff too, you know, and it's, it's pretty wild, man. Like it's, it's where it's like, imagine a, like a mobile home park, one half having the pads, people staying there monthly, and then that's where the other half of it fence it off, right? You know, create a whole different environment, whole different atmosphere. When it comes to mobile home parks, campgrounds, and RV parks, it's all about atmosphere. You're, you're talking about like, like kind of a half and half, like a park yeah. that will, gotcha, long term and short term. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as long as, you know, there's no like zoning issues with that or any kind of like ordinances that go against it. Yeah, if you need to subdivide it, um, if you can, cool. If not, then like see if there's any adjoining plots of land next to it for sale. You know, there's so many plots of land that's for sale. It's so stupid. Uh, and it's for cheap too. But um, but yeah, like even if you can, if like as long as the yeah, as long as you can do half of it and fence it off and then or even half of it or even a quarter of it, whatever, just kind of think back on the atmosphere. Like how, what kind of atmosphere can we create, right? And like what can it how can it differentiate? Um, and be able to, you know, be able to have short term on one side. And then that way, you know, those who are staying there monthly, you know, see if you, I, of course, you know, secure what's, you know, short term rental um, and make sure that, you know, even if you have to update any kind of like uh, lease agreements and saying you were not allowed to fail, you're, you're going on this part of the property, you're trespassing because this is the other property, et cetera. Um, you know, update any of that stuff to cover your butt. But other than that, um, any kind of zoning regulations, any kind of building allowances, Pretty much as far as you know, that side of it, make sure you're clear. Other than that, I mean, as far as like a sublease entity, kind of like a corporate housing structure, other than that, I think you're clear, you know? Uh, and that's where, you know, Tiny Home Plug LLC can come into play or even to yourself, any entity, it doesn't matter, um, to do like a sublet to where they can do the short-term rental, you know, if that's uh, as far as to protect your butt legally, protect yourself legally. Um, you yeah, know, same thing. It's the same, same structure as corporate housing, but for short-term rental with mobile home parks. Yeah. So, that sublet would take all the responsibility, right? Saying a few years ago, I would have said there's not a park owner out there that would allow that. Now today, it's a different story. You know, there's there's people that are doing exactly that. You know, yeah, HOAs where, are where they're that. they're getting they're basically tripling the income they would typically get if they just rent it traditionally. It's crazy. So a unit like what we're looking at right in back of you, that whole setup. What are we what are we looking at? That one, that was a luxury one. Um, so we, cause that one's 180,000 cause he decked it out. I mean, absolutely decked it out. Um, and I mean, he like full on pillow windows. I mean, absolutely like full to the night. Um, so 180,000 for this one, but typically it'd be around 120. So yeah, he put in about 60 grand. It was so great. <laughs> like he wants the whole thing wrapped and everything. He doesn't want to look looking like a container, but big old windows too. And I'm ima imagine, you know, I talk about, I mentioned my buddy, Mark, cause we had this conversation mm -hmm. and I'm in Louisiana. Well, we, we, you're on the, you're on the coast too, right? Mississippi, yeah. all of us, we're all here. And, and, and what do we deal with every year? Hurricanes. <laughs> yeah. uh, man. And that's the other thing too. Like when it comes to anything that has a track record, yeah, I'm in Huntsville, man, you know, like hurricane Valley, bro. I, I literally live 20, like, <clears throat> 20 minutes south of where all those massive hurricanes came in years ago and just destroyed everything. Um, and so anything that has a history of weather like that, I always say, look, man, this is, these are definitely hurricane proof, but we got to make sure any kind of anchors, any kind of additional security features need to be installed to make sure things are as secure as possible. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. Absolutely huge. Because um, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if we didn't think through those things. You know, and that's, that's just... I know that fear, and uh, yeah, my thankfully my parents had the the uh, the affordability to be able to put an underground like underground like 
like basement bunker type of deal. Everyone's a little drop in ones, yeah. uh, you know, years ago. And um, yes, Miss DG, absolutely. That's where business credit can come in handy. And we actually have a, um, a lender that will actually use land as uh, collateral, by the way. But, um, but yeah, man, you having those, uh, having everything as, as secure as possible because. I don't, I don't want anyone being afraid and not being able to get out. Of yeah. Well, look, and, and, and I think about, so Biloxi is, uh, we used to go there, my family and I, like every, every summer, we spent a lot of time in Biloxi. And then after uh, Katrina, going back there was like, wow, you know, just destroyed the place. So I'm thinking about this park, kind of a selling point for them if they brought in container homes to fill their vacancies. Big time. They wouldn't have to worry about that long term. Somebody in the group, posted asked uh, said this the other day and i wish i could find it um their question was like has anybody ever dealt with a park that just got totally wiped out and i think their question was based on insurance you know and it, they were in an area where, where where they had a lot of tornadoes so that's why they were asking and it makes me think of like biloxi if they were to go this route that would be one of the 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 advantage of the, of the pros of going you know container home because well in a homestead like this doing a rancher style yeah, you know, it would be key, you know, if they're going to do that. And I mean, that's the biggest thing, you know, if they're going to, because that this opens the door for cool stuff. Like I was just in a wholesale, um, wholesaler chat earlier this week, you know, anyone can do wholesale too, um, you know, and that's where it's like, it's interesting because with being in the mobile home um, industry, that's, you, you, I mean, you open yourself up to a ton of opportunity, like not even, not even including opportunity zones, right? Like, I don't even, I'd, I'd be curious of how many, like, how many properties people have in this group that are on Opportunity Zone and don't even know it. What, what is that? You just keep saying Opportunity Zone. I know we talked about it the other day, but just for anybody else listening, what, what, are, what are you talking about when you say that? Yeah, Opportunity Zones is a, um, it's a specific zoning that's, that's with the federal government that allows so many different perks that um, they have different regulations and different stipulations. But if you are, if your property, and that's where, um, and I can even see all the type in the chat here. So that way folks can use this as a resource. And this is a easydoit.com. And this is the uh, David Sullivan I was telling you about. Um, he was the one that helped with Morgan Stanley setting up their Opportunity Zone Fund. And one of the funds that, um, that he works with that he actually helped set up, um, sorry. Um, so with the uh, help set up uh, as far as being able to, um, sorry, one of, my, one of the folks that were on the team sent me a message about a contract. Threw me off, but uh, but he helped Morgan Stanley set up their opportunity zone fund. I'm working with uh, an opportunity zone fund in San Diego um, that he helped set up, and he set up like 50 other ones too. But he actually, you know, politics aside, I don't care what people voted for. I don't. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, that stuff's petty for me. Um, I'm on the side of people, so bipartisan speaking. But he was one of him and Anna were actually two uh, two of the critical advisors to the Trump administration to solidify opportunity zones to help because opportunity zones will help access HUD funding. Uh, you know, you'll have zero capital gains tax after 10 years too, by the way. And so there's a lot of ways to go about it, but you have to go about it in a specific way to file for that. Uh, there's, it's just, it's like, it's a whole other language, like insurance really, truly. And it's, it's exhausting to a degree. Um, can you get funding to start a short-term rental? Yes, to a degree. Um, we can actually use land as collateral um, for one of our lenders that is a hard pool. Um, but you can absolutely get funding. It's just a matter of like business credit and you can actually use uh, uh, land uh, as collateral for a line of credit if you go through the right people as well. Um, for like the credit, um, how do you find opportunity zones? So good question, that's so smart. That's why I added that link there because the easydoit.com will allow you, they'll pull up a whole map. Um, just go to, I can't remember where, where I was sh shipping things around on the website, but that is a full on free resource. It's not a funnel. Um, there's just tons of education on there. What is an opportunity zone? How do you find them? But that whole map will pull open the entire United States and show you exactly where are the opportunity zones. Pull up your partial ID. See if it's right there. Seriously. And that right there is, I mean, scary. Oh my God. Like one like just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Zero capital gains tax after 10 years. You have to hold on to it for 10 years, but also there's density um, incentives, green off grid incentives, right? Solar. Um, ton, ton of different ways. I mean, it's just bonkers, man. And that's where it unlocks so much. And I mean, right now they're they're extending it the um, whole entire opportunity zones up until 2040. Um, so up until 2030 is when the last chance people can take advantage of it. You're welcome, Smarter. You're welcome, Miss DG. Um, but that's where it's so crazy cool is that when it comes down to um, when it comes down to the opportunity zones, like I said, it's a it's a very dense topic. And so it's a, you want to make sure that 
you want to do it right because if you don't, you'll go to jail. I don't want anyone. I don't want that for anybody. Ooh, I don't want that for anyone. Good Lord. Um, so anyway, so kind of skirting back away from the opportunity zones, uh, we can kind of circle back around to it. But that, um, guys, please, please, please go to easydo.com and just do your research. Do not jump into it half cocked because if you do, you'll get slapped upside the head by the police, and it's not good. Um, so and the SEC. So when it comes down to when it comes down to being able to you know like when it comes down to looking at as far as the, the mobile home parks and uh, Samara <laughs> said I don't do jail. <laughs> neither do I. Neither do I not anymore. Uh, but one of the biggest things is being able to um, when you're able to look at those land, looking at land uh, on the mobile home parks. Look at what you have like like if it's like if people's leases are starting to get to an end and they're you know being disgruntled, you know they would want to move on. No worries. You know, and, and that's where you can look at, okay, well, let's do this as far as the building allowances. Can you come by midterm rental with short term rental? Oh, combined. Um, yeah, yeah, you can absolutely can. So you can do like a, um, you can do like a, let I me mean, honestly, same setup with corporate housing, you know, if, and that's the thing. Corporate housing is a little bit different. Corporate housing, they're not going to put their premium talent next to those who are doing a monthly who can only afford not to be a jerk or anything. That's just be really honest with yourself. If you're a, if you're hiring somebody at three hundred thousand dollars a year or at two hundred thousand dollars a year, yeah, you know, would you want to put them in an area that's looks really nice? Short term rental, the pain tolerance is much higher because they're in and out. Corporate housing is long term, longer term stay, but also too. When it comes down to you, just kind of you be be honest with yourself. Don't be don't be you know, delusional with the kind of like the setup of the of the property as, as it stands right now. But kind of think about it, like if you're if you're earning five hundred thousand dollars a year and you want to you want to sit in, and be in a place that with the atmosphere it goes back to the atmosphere, and you want to make sure that the um, that the uh, the area looks nice and it's well kept, especially for corporate housing. But when it comes to like a one month stay, you know, three month stay, six month stay. Try, that's where it gets really cool because that's where you can do an extended stay and do it to where like someone's having a home built, right? You know, that's a, that's a higher pain tolerance because they're not going to stay there for forever. Yeah. You know, and that's when it comes down to the long-term stay, you want to protect yourself and also to make sure that with the kind of think through homeowners, homeowners have a much, you know, like, like traditional homeowners have a much different mindset than mobile home park owner, or not mobile home park owners, but mobile homeowners or renters for that matter. Because let's just be straight up, like the, the, the demographic of those who are renters in the mobile home are much different than those who are going to do, do corporate housing with a, with a, you know, like a homestead that looks like this. It's just the honesty. It's not trying to be mean or anything, but just, just understand that you want to make sure that you set up different things in place to preserve that atmosphere that's over on like a corporate um, housing side of it. Um, also to short term stay, because folks who um, you never know who you're going to attract, you never know who's going to rent it. Yeah. Um, traveling professionals, you know, they could uh, they have the Murphy bed in there, have a desk that folds down to, bam, done, wall, wall, bing, bang, you know, and that's what um, you just want to consider that because I'm, you know, I, I've i been a full stack marketer and business developer for the past 10 years. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to positioning it and putting those elements, those amenities in place on the property because at the end of the day, people aren't going to buy with this, you know, that looks like trash. Like, let's just be straight up. So if something looks a little bit rougher on the property, um, yeah, I would just put a fence up so that way it's harder to see. And then that way you can say, you know, then, then section them off, you know, that way it says, oh, look, guys, we're doing this on this part of it. And that way it just, it, it helps create that, that break between. And that way it helps separate them too, without having to actually do anything major on it. Um, so when it comes to creating that atmosphere or any kind of stuff that you want to add into it, just make sure that you, it, it's a delicate dance, you know, with those who have been there for the longest time, who have built your business, who are your legacy customers you know, your historical customers, you don't want to piss them off and then be like, they trash the units and then they lose. creates a whole entire crap storm. But that's where, when it comes to the corporate side of it, like, like uh, midterm stay, um, you know, as far as three months, six months, if it's, you know, a month or whatever, uh, you just want to make sure you create that atmosphere that's kind of blocked off to where it looks, you know, it looks like its own neighborhood, right? But it's really just the other side of the fence. <laughs> so there's creative ways to do that. And so that's where it just, even through rock paths and any kind of stuff that is, you know, it looks really nice. I mean, just, you know, there's ways to make, you know, really cost-effective, you know, uh, cost-effective uh, amenities on the site. You know, think about, you know, fire pit, right? Uh, nice, clean little area. Do like a pergola, uh, um, you know, just get one from Home Depot, plant it in, done. And, you know, have that's where it's even too. It could be out in front of the units. You know, have like a, uh, like a communal sit place, you know, a rest area, you know, 
yeah. you know, outside of the units and have a great a gathering area so they'd like to I always see them like as a, I feel like they they would be a good option for a 55 and older community gosh yeah you know yeah. what I mean like someone that's just downsizing simple life you know sell well, the big 2,000 square foot house and the big yard and, and downsize and you know something like that a quiet quiet area mm-hmm. let's see oh definitely well and there's a lot of folks too there's a huge trend right now with the younger couples that are cutting their leases and moving back home with mom and dad and they're putting these in their backyard so that way they can do a, a form of at-home hospice Got big it. time big big time and i mean my brother-in-law's doing that my mom, mother-in-law so like a mother-in-law suite basically Oh, that, we have that. We actually have a model called the mother-in-law suite. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, or the or the son-in-law suite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's be real. Let's be real. <laughs> oh man, some parents are having their kids come back, but they don't want to kill them, so they throw them, throw a unit in the backyard and throw them in there. <laughs> and two, whether they pay rent or not, they can mark that off, you know, as far as the, um, you know, as far as the rental, yeah, you know, as far as that being, a, you know, like how we employ our children, right? Twelve thousand dollars a year type, type of tax write off, type thing. Yeah, easy. So, easy. so Jeremy, how did you find yourself in this in this niche here? Man, long story, man. I've, um, you know, I have a heart for those who are hopeless, and um, uh, and, and no matter what in business, um, you know, kind of just share my story. I probably should have started with that. Probably would have been helpful. <laughs> but my dad, my dad was murdered when I was 18. And I contemplated suicide when I was 16. My parents divorced when I was 10. And no matter what business I'm in, I, I am always called to those who are uh, considered a lost cause. And, and those who have been tossed aside, those who are just considered undesirables. And, and so, and I have a passion for business. You know, I have, uh, yeah, I have a landscaping business. I own a, well, second, this is my second landscaping business I've owned. Um, you know, I own an e-learning platform that actually focuses in on the trades to help people provide for their families. Um, and we have students in 10 states. And, you know, I, I, gosh, man, and then when it comes to, and I share that from a place of healing, because when it comes to my dad's murder, uh, it's been a cold case going ongoing for 11 years. They haven't found the guy yet. And, you know, for the past 10 years, you know, productizing companies, um, helping to, you know, streamline cash flow businesses and really to help step, I really overhaul. You know, I go in like a surgeon. And overhaul the, the sales process, the marketing, all the systems, et cetera. And then that's where it's like, you know, during that time, though, I mean, that's why my, that's how my wife and I actually made money from our wedding. We actually made money from it. And, um, but because the wedding venue became a client. <laughs> and so uh, overhaul the whole wedding venue. Um, and I mean, uh, marketing, sales systems, et cetera. But during like all of that, during all that process, people would lose loved ones. And, and so part of that, and I'll, so I'll connect the dots as to how these two come together because, um, you know, I've, my first business venture after my dad passed away was a landscaping, hardscaping company. And that company, when I was an owner at 18, I'm 30 now, um, 30 and a half, but um, jokes aside though, but I was 18 then, uh, 40% owner in a 13 year old landscaping company. Um, over holiday, we did a 4 million in nine months off of six contracts, handed off actually, Lord told me to give my part of the business to him and to not have him buy me out. I wanted to sow that seed into him. I don't know why, but I mean, that was whatever. But, um, but I went ahead and gave my part to him for free. Um, he was able to, uh, that's when I went overseas to do mission work in South America for a year. Um, and I mean, dude, four years after that, his son is now running the company and the new company I'm, I am the owner in. Um, you know, yeah, I, I decided to be a minority owner in this one because, um, because it's a woman-owned uh, landscaping business. That son is one of our subcontractors, and how cool is that uh, to be able to have that that all connect all the way back around? So, all that being said, I'm all about recession-proof businesses. So, anything in the home and outside the home, working with real estate agents, brokers, you know, investors on the whole opportunity zone, tax lien side of it, uh, fixers and flippers, wholesalers, you name it. And, you know, I'm productizer companies, coaches too, all at like like academies, you name it. I mean, all this stuff I've done. And it's interesting because uh, about, what was it, yeah, 2022 now? So beginning of 2020 this is where I was like, man, you know what? I have um, I understand people really well. That's why with the marketing systems, being able to really dial in, um, but then pouring that into you where it's like, you know what? People really need attainable housing. There's not really been a big solution about it. And, and that's when I'm dug into container homes. 
and I was, I was working with a uh, container on company for about two years. I won't name them uh, now, but when I, um, I, I asked them about the price point after a year and a half, they hadn't broken ground that bummed me out because I'm like, man, I really want to create, I want to supply su uh, sustainability, sustainable living, you know, attainable housing, affordable housing. Like there's like, I told them, I was like, man, I can't wait to do that. And they're like, bro, at our price point, we can't do that. And I'm like, bro, then what are you even doing? Like, what are we even talking about? Like, why would a container home, like a one bedroom container home cost 150 grand? Yep. No, thanks. Now, how do you I, make that make sense to people? The math ain't math, and homie. And that's where it's like, and that's where I literally, I was just like, you know what? I got to, um, and that's why I came on, I got to find another uh, another building team. And I came on board with Galvan Allen Homes out of San Antonio, Texas, because at the end of the day, man, one of the biggest things that caters to depression, that caters to drug addiction, that caters to chronic homelessness, that caters to uh, disabled vets not having a place to stay is a freaking affordable housing. All these different, like all the ghettos, they're slum lords and they don't care. That's why they look like that. That's why it looks like crap. It's not the people living there. Yeah, yeah sometimes. But, <laughs> um, you know, but it's slum lords, you know, and that's like, that's why talking with the HUD, like the, oh, the housing authority, those who are in foster in the foster care system, you know, everything as far as independent living, assisted living facilities. Like I, I, I hate seeing people hurt. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, I was on my bedside going to kill myself at 16, man. And I'm the product of an independent living facility. I am a product of a good counselor who believed in me. And <laughs> you'll believe it, man. The same facility that I went to rehab at 17, a buddy of mine that I went, I went back to minister there to breathe life and uh, breathe hope into those young guys. He bought it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, holy crap, man. Like, what the crap dude like i'm like oh my god <laughs> like and it's off of new man road in mobile alabama newman road sorry not new man road but wow. the name works. and it's like like i i mean at the end of the day like i that's why i am up late at night you know tirelessly working on four brands working on everything and pushing it because at the end of the day, I, I, I don't care. Like, I don't care about what your problem is. And that's why, um, you know, with using what Utah created, they created urban zoning directly meant for Section 8 voucher recipients. And these vouchers that don't, that no one receives and no one takes in, they're investors that are hungry. There are investors that are hungry to supply a solution. Yeah. And now it's just a matter of looking at the master plans and finding people who care. Because the, the independent living facilities, assisted living facilities, hospice, they live or die by the operators, man. They do. And there's no way around it. And, and that's, that's, the, that's what burns in my heart every day. Because, you know, it's funny. I didn't realize how much I knew about real estate <laughs> until we went into doing creative deals. I've done my deal on deals in the past. But when it comes down to, yeah, I'm talking with the, the, the senior development planner for the housing authority here in Huntsville. I'm talking with you know, loan officers and commercial real estate folks that I've known that have been in the industry for 30 years. And we're working together and doing these creative deals. And it's like, am I the only one saying this? I guess. But like, it's like, let's have fun. Let's connect the dots. Let's spark ideas. Let's spark these different things that, uh, you know, like let's help people connect the dots. That's all I care about. Yeah, and well, I love it. And, and I love the creativity part. You know, it allows you to expand and all that. So look, we talked about this, right? We talked about the the whole boxable thing, right? Coming up and in amount of attention that it gave and, and how it's even impacted the whole tiny home industry just because of it. But you were sharing with me too, is, is the problem they're having as far as being able to meet the the demand mm -hmm. and, and get that. So what's what's going on with that? Well, I mean, they have a, you know, so I go back down to logistics and I'm like, huh, I really look at exactly, this isn't a slam on boxable. I just, you know, this is an observation, you know? And so, you know, when it comes down to, uh, when it comes down to their facility, they only have, you know, their facility can only create 3,500 units a year. Right. And what's interesting is that they have a, their marketing is fantastic. You know, it's spreading the awareness and letting people know, but they have a fulfillment problem. That's why they have that investment arm and hopefully they're, you know, they're talking about going public and they're modular, you know, we're not, you know, and so, well, when it comes to the homestead, that would be considered modular, but 
Um, because when it comes down to ADUs and our, our B classification assets, where that's where we set ourselves apart a little bit and a customization wildly, definitely. But when it comes down to like there, they have a waiting list of a hundred thousand people, a hundred thousand people. Wow. And it's like, let's do the math on that. hundred thousand people, 3,500 units a year. Even if they go to three, three facilities, that's only 10,500 units per year. Last time I checked, 100,000 even divided by 11, uh, 100,000 divided by even, let's just say round up and say 15,000. Dang, that's a lot of years. And you talk about an automated, you know, manufacturing facility. Um, man, you talk about it. It's, there's a lot of logistics and you know, red tape that go into that. In the interim, people are suffering. Yeah. You know, it could be a good thing for you. That's where we come in, you know, and that's why it's so crazy. And then, so that's where, you know, sorry, so I didn't mean to end on that. So like with, uh, with the people that are, that are suffering, like we have lenders and financing, financiers that'll help with getting those, those units done, you know? And then even too, I've got uh, partnered up with a guy here. You, you remember Don Daniel, uh, Don uh, Ice Daniels, you know, from Clubhouse. Um, he is, he is the interest cancellation expert. That's why I call him Ice, but I've known him for almost 10 years. Great guy. And, and that's a program that I always recommend that people get into as far as their development projects to cut the interest principal payment down, all the financing. The dude has literally helped people cut their mortgage from 30 years down to seven years, legally. Oh. And I'm like, oh. And, and I know, and it, these are, and the lending industry love it because, um, you know, because you come back for another loan. But he has a FinTech is what it is. It, shows, it runs along an amortization schedule. It shows you exactly when you need to make the payments. So that way you, uh, that way, that way you make the crucial payments you need to and not anything extra. So it's really cool. But, uh, but it's interesting because with, um, with so many different things that, that take place that, um, you know, with being able to, with that, even the, with them, you know, like with Boxable having that phenomenal marketing, you know, their marketing is on point. Love it. But what happens is a lot of folks want to get creative. They want to be able to do like a double leg. They can do double stacks. They can go up to six stories, whatever. But when it comes down to creativity, people want to be able to express themselves, you know, be able to have something that's really nice and clean. Um, but even too, you know, within Section 8, voucher recipients, a lot of folks were like, well, that'd be great for that. And it kind of, not really. Because the number one goal for transitional living and workforce housing is to help people get their dignity back and not feel like a number. Yeah, 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 big. Yeah, no, I get that. That makes total sense. I don't know if everybody caught that. But I get what you, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah, they're people too. <laughs> yeah, and that's the yeah. thing is like, especially for those who are coming out of incarceration, right? Yeah. You know, um, yeah, a lot of folks, what will happen is just because, you know, we, we work with what we have, you know, single family homes, you know, this is great and all, but they'll throw a bunch of twin beds in there and it reminds people of prison, bro. Like, mattresses are that thin i've been on one like i know what it feels like it sucks like it's like sleeping on a pancake like literally and it's like when it comes down to having their own boom boom like their own unit to live in at seventy three thousand financed and then probably what 500 bucks a month come on like it makes so much sense because then they're like you can charge per bed and we can put two units in there like this you know this project we're having in san diego right now um yeah workforce housing the subsidized rent especially those who are aging out of foster care yeah massive massive but anyway sorry to take which is a lot of people probably more than people even know realize yeah no i get it you said the word dignity and that, that I, I totally get it you know because that might that's that could be what gets them over the hump and get them through to that you know the next phase or not maybe that's where they get stuck I heard a story, um, and I got a buddy, uh, he runs, uh, well, he helps supervise over 200 facilities of independent living. And I kid you not, he had one guy come in, look at the place for 15 minutes and left. It didn't need, didn't want to stay there. He went and found his own spot. He said, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. He still got the full monthly check from the state for that program. Just like that. Say 15 minutes. But one thing that I always have a gut suspicion about is that that man came in and said, wow, this guy really cares about me. And that's all I needed to see. Yeah. I guarantee yeah. you that's what happened. And that's what's so interesting because even too, folks who want to, when they get out of whatever kind of crappy situation they came out of, they want to walk around butt naked with that film looked at. Yep. Let's be real. People love to walk around, but I do. I love to walk around butt naked. 
how the hell? <laughs> and think about student housing too. No, no videos, please. None, none. That's just the whole thing. Um, so, but yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I but, see uh, Maria says, Calvin, uh, I'd like to meet you the next time you're on the coast. Absolutely. My wife and I just, well, we had our, our anniversary was in, uh, was in April. We went there for the weekend. Just a random trip. We hadn't been there in a while. And I uh, just decided to, to up and, and you know, he head out of town. So we'll be back. And, and uh, yeah, I'd love to meet you. That'd be great. Maybe we'll, ha we'll have a mobile home meetup. Woo. We'll do that. Mobile Jeremy, home man, look. What's that? Alabama. Say again? <laughs> I said a mobile home uh, meetup uh, in mobile in Mobile. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that sounds good, too. I haven't had some much. Well, look, man, I always want to always want to be, you know, respectful of people's time because i know like I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for people to come on here like yourself and just take time out of your busy schedule right we're all busy um and just share value and share your story i uh, appreciate that too man the transparency in your story and all that um because it's real you know that's it's, it's real stuff um and i'm sure if sure everybody else got value i'm sure there's some people clicking on that website right now <laughs> oh here let me um Put the what, was, yeah, what was the other name? There was a couple. If anybody wanted to learn more about the opportunity zones before we hop off here, well, oh, yeah, a couple of uh, names that uh, that you said earlier that they could go. Walk, is there? Do they have like a YouTube channel or? Oh yeah, no, they can just hit that site. It'll it'll open up. It'll take them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We there's a lot. Of, man, I sit on, I sit on the board with a, uh, OZ Easy is what it is. Uh, this uh, we have a ton of sites like OZ Voices, a lot of stuff on Clubhouse. I'll tag you in too. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you can learn. Um, man, I'm telling you, like it's um, oh, on, oh yeah, actually. So uh, for those who want to know about the financials, uh, that guy Don uh, Ice Daniels, go to my blog uh, and go check out. Uh, uh, there's a blog on there I wrote about him, and it backlinks to his website. So just go on there. There's actually an interview he did with Otis James as well. And I know I don't know if you know Otis James yet, but dude, that dude is a monster mover shaker when it comes to just real estate in general. Um, but yeah, it is, uh, but yeah, go on there and that blog and just hit the blog tab. It should be like the most recent blog that's on there or one of them. Uh, but it should have like the, the logo or not the logo, but the uh, preview photo of money on it. So just look for that and just read through it. Uh, but yeah, it breaks everything down back links to this site. And I mean, I'm serious, man. That's going to be, it's wild. Uh, I've been doing another blog too about um, opportunity zones as well. So there's going to be that's awesome. Time. That's good information. I mean, that could be life changing for somebody that does, you know, if you don't know about it, you don't know about it. Yeah. Right? So that's we appreciate good. you telling us about it. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah. And that's the yeah. kicker. People can use that program right now. And I mean, for goodness sake, they can use that in their mortgage, for God's sake, if they want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, I can't thank you enough, man. Uh, so look, I am going to. Uh, I'm going to send you some information to connect you with the guys over in Biloxi yeah, definitely. and uh, just see where, where, where it goes. Let's just have a conversation with them and we'll see where it goes, you know? Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, so I would love to do, I mean, I always feel I, I, they reached out to me about helping them infill their park and I've been able to find them some homes, but it's, it's just, we just can't find them, you know, like, like we need them now. So maybe this is the solution, you know, we'll see, but um, yeah. we can put them on the cinder blocks too and keep it super easy. You know, yeah. nothing that'd be crazy and they can move them around wherever they need to. Awesome. Well, look, I, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, and anybody, if you join late, you know, you can, we're going to have the, the replay pinned up at the top so you can go back and watch the replay. Uh, and look, if you guys, if you guys have any questions for Jeremy, tag him, tag him in here. If you have any questions for me, you know, definitely reach out and, uh, you know, hopefully we can help. So Jeremy, thank you so much, man. Uh, I look forward, yeah, I look forward to doing some things with you and, uh, and uh, you know, appreciate you coming on, man. And we'll, we'll definitely connect soon. Yeah, man. If you let me know if you ever want to tag in on anything, this stuff is therapeutic for me. I like. I'm so passionate about it that talking about it helps me get it out. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, whatever you want to, man. Just let me know, and I'll be more than happy to carve out time. Love it, man. Appreciate you, man. You guys have a good night, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. See y'all.